Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Harrell, author, modern mystic, and really big rune fan. My spiritually focused practice is soul intent arts, and you are listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, animism, modern mysticism, soul healing, and how all of that intersects on my path. The weekly rune is out, and if you're not familiar with it, definitely go check it out. It's a rune cast that I've done for several years, focused on the runic calendar and current half-month rune. If you're not sure what a half-month rune is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the weekly rune at soulintentarts.com. It's explained at the beginning of every rune cast. Before I go further, I'd like to give a shout out to Charlotte, who paid What in the Weird a wonderful compliment this week. Thank you so much for taking the time to write to me, Charlotte, and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you to everyone who talks to me about the show and the weekly rune, and also to my Patreon supporters who, in part, make it all possible with their financial support. If you would like to show your support for What in the Weird and the Weekly Rune, search for the Weekly Rune on Patreon.com. And thank you so much for that. My big news for this week is that I was featured on Christina Pratt's podcast, Why Shamanism Now, to talk about my new book, Runic Book of Days. It comes out next week, a week from today, exactly, though you can pre-order it now on Amazon. So her show was my first time talking about the book, and I was, I was really nervous about it. I'm a writer, not a speaker, for one thing. And even though I've written the weekly rune for years, I haven't really talked much about my rune work. I haven't had to articulate it in a way that other people can relate to uh, an exercise in Rido, yes? So that exact nuance of Rido is what we're talking about today. It went well, of course, the podcast, as always, because anytime I get to talk to Christina, I learn all kinds of things. So check it out and the other 450 hours that she's devoted to discussing modern shamanism on Why Shamanism Now. You can Google it and it is a wonderful resource. This week, we are firmly in the half month of Rido. In the last episode, we talked about Raido through the lens of the healing story or shamanic narrative, this very intense journey from realizing when you've changed, you can't go back to the same life, and you need new skills to be able to be what life and circumstance are demanding that you be now. It was a great episode. Go listen to it. But I hinted in that episode that this week we would take that discourse a bit further. And by that, I mean that once we know what to share, like once we've lived that experience of this deeply, personally, life-altering arc, once we know what we want to share, when we've come through that whole initiation, once we begin doing so, certain demands are applied to that soul-sourced narrative. Everything changes when people start listening or when you realize they're listening. When you realize you aren't just telling your story, this is your life on on display. My first book was my autobiography, which to this day I have deep gratitude to Lorna Tedder and Spilled Candy Enterprises for publishing it. And total side note, that was the only nonfiction book I ever intended to write. So I, I've written seven since then. And I knew that I would write that book from the age of seven when I first started writing it. No joke. I started writing it when I was about seven years old. But I know that other writers will know what I'm talking about. Stories burn to be told. And you lie in absolute insanity until they are. So... Gift of the Dreamtime, Awakening to the Divinity of Trauma, was my first book. It was very much my first healing story. And since its publication, my life has changed. It changed with the publication of that book. It changes with the publication of every book. But your first one, 
and one that's your personal healing story, it's a huge leap to take. Did I know what I was doing? Part of me did. And it's that part that I've constantly deferred to with all of the insane soul leaps that I've taken since. But most of me was not prepared for what putting that story out to the world would bring. Does that mean that everybody has to publish their healing story? No. There are all kinds of ways that you can share your healing story. It can be through a poem. It can be through a blog post. It could be um, a letter to an editor, a dance, a song, a conversation, or perhaps you are a theatric storyteller. There are all kinds of ways that people share their stories. Publishing Gift of the Dreamtime was the most horrifying and liberating thing I've ever done. And I know now that's how every healing story goes. Whether you wanted to or you're caught completely unaware, spoiler alert, you heard it here first, that's how it goes no matter what format you deliver it in. That is the untold trajectory of the healing story. If you're not shitting yourself over telling it, I'm not sure that you're showing up enough in your own story. And that's the irony. (laughs) You think that living it was enough, right? You did the thing. You turned the big corner. You found the bright, shiny light of salvation, enlightenment, healing, whatever, fill in the blank. But it's not enough. And that's what becomes evident as you come through the trajectory of your own healing story. Human consciousness always says go. Foremost. That's the number one thing. It never says hang on a second or let me get ready. Human consciousness is always looking for the next level up. And second, and this was the hardest one, because the story, once you live it, once you finish that initiation... The story has become its own life force, and it starts making demands upon you. Once lived, it is no longer yours. I'm going to say that one more time. The healing story, once lived, is no longer yours. It has its own life force. It has its own calling, its own needs, and it will demand that they be met. That sounds like all other crises, right? I mean, for that reason... When you reach the point that the healing story must be told, you will be newly liberated and terrified. Because no matter how firm you are in the new you, how healed you've become, how confident, that story now has plans of its own. And those plans become part of your calling, always. When it comes to sharing the healing story, we're all introverts. I don't care how well-spoken you are, how comfortable you are in telling stories or, or dancing or painting or whatever your medium of expression is. When the story is yours, not just one you made up and wrote, not some fiction you pulled out of thin air as a metaphor but the actual story of your survival, your triumph, your life change. That shit is sobering and frightening. Gift of the Dreamtime put me in a place to witness the healing stories of others. I began receiving letters from all over the world about how my story inspired others to share theirs, and it was the most rewarding response I could have hoped for. It, it was also still really scary. Well, what if somebody didn't like it or they thought that it was bullshit or worse yet, that they had their own hero's journey, but they couldn't get across the arc. They couldn't get the info they needed to complete the initiation. And then they wanted me to tell them how to do that. Sharing your healing story puts you in a place of leadership by the simple virtue of telling it. We talked last week about how storytelling was part of our brain development and biological function. It's a key factor in how our social growth as humans, but as individuals right here, right now, all of us, it's a key factor in our social growth. 
However, there's also a spiritual function to realizing our healing story and sharing it. And that function is personal calling. Our calling is our healing story. So what is calling? Well, the word calling has been handed down through the new age filter, often something along the lines of, I'm here to gain compassion, or I'm here to bring the world love and light. Well, who isn't, at least on paper, who isn't here in some way to propel things forward in the best manner that we can, and that manner is in the eye of the beholder, right? Nobody gets to say who's doing a good job, who's doing a bad job. That's just the way it is. Everybody has some shred of those things in why we're on this planet. But everybody also has a unique calling, and that's what I'm talking about today. Some people might call that life purpose, soul contract, fill in the blank with whatever works. But understand, I am not talking about some shared base do-gooder motivation. I'm talking about the reason that you get up in the morning. And the reason that sometimes you can't sleep at night and the reason that gives you a passion that sustains you across all the crazy to keep doing what you do. This is the reason that you're on the planet that nobody else has. Only you now in this life, not some other iteration of yourself. And the place to know what that calling is, the place to identify it, is your healing story. No one else has it. No one else can tell it. And therein lies the rub. It has to be you. It has to come from your mouth. It has to come from your brain chemistry out into the world. Nobody's calling is self-contained. Nobody's calling is I'm here to bring compassion. There is a demand, even in that, that you get off your butt and do the thing that demonstrates compassion, right? So even if we're talking about the collective, smarmy, blah, 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 life contract, it demands that you do something. So when we're talking about this granular healing story, only you have it, calling, it cannot be self-contained. It's not just your wake-up call or your personal bookmark to remember to do better. It's your responsibility to bear to the world as medicine for others to listen and learn, to become inspired by their own stories and begin their own walk to finish that initiation. Because chances are, If they don't hear you, if they don't catch that moment, that one intersection with you and your story, they may never become inspired or they may have to endure a ton more before they come inspired because only your story can find them where they are in this moment. And to make that more complicated, most of us don't just show up with the skills to express or even carry out our calling. We have to learn how to speak well or write well or become a better artist or performer. And when you have a problem that needs to be solved, but you don't know how to get the skills just yet, what do you do? You go get them. And how are you going to go get them? By putting yourself in new situations, new places, among new people. That process sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because you've done this before. This formula of Ansu's plus Raido equals Kenaz or Kauna, depending on how you pronounce it. That's the next half month rune and the final rune in this equation. This formula is our opportunity to find a groove with our healing story. It's the chance to learn what to call it all, to go on that journey and learn to do better, then wrap it all up by actually doing better, by showing up. And the fact that even within the realization of your healing story and how it informs your soul calling, that you be demanded to do it all over again and again, that you remain teachable regardless of what you learn, that you remain tender to your own story yet without attachment 
to how it goes out into the world, that's the formula that these runes are teaching us. And that is what the half month of Rido is here to give us this week. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about Rido or calling or my class on the healing story that's coming up soon, feel free to email me at kelly at solententarts.com or call in through the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also, check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and lots of other platforms. And if you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which I co-host on Anchor with a couple of other lovely ladies. If you have Amazon Alexa, you can add the flash briefing skill, the wisdom of the runes, to receive runic prompts and inspiration throughout the week. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting soulintentarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. And if you do want to be updated about when my class on the healing story becomes available, you can join my mailing list at soulintentarts.com. I'll be sending out updates on that soon. I'm Kelly Harrell, and this has been What in the Weird.